from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster who's uh, here to uh, give you a little uh, bit of a, a, jour- a journey, a meandering journey into the world of friends. Put a little finale into the world, a journey into the world of friends, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? But welcome to Sleep With Me. This is a podcast that's here to keep you company in the deep, dark night so you could fall asleep. I'm here to be your boar friend. If you're new, I'm glad you're here checking this show out. If you're a regular listener, what up, regular listeners? Hope you're doing well. So good to see you again. Uh, so Sleep With Me is a show. It does take some getting used to as the regular listeners are probably nodding along because it is very different. But really, I'm just here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff while you fall asleep. Most people listen to the show in a linear way. uh, And the first part of the show coming up is what they wind down to. So we've got this beginning of the show. Then we've got support because most people enjoy listening to the ad supportive version of the show for free. Then they wind down after the support uh, to a long meandering intro where I try to explain what the podcast is and I go off topic. I get mixed up. And then after the intro, some support, and then there'll be our bedtime story, Journey into the World of Friends. So if you're new, give the show a few tries, see how it goes. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, these sponsors are how we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, Scoots here. I'm talking about sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus, uh, or sleepwithmeplus, I guess. And I wanted to take a second to thank everybody who has never supported the show before, uh, who's signing up for Sleep With Me Plus, whether you're checking it out on a trial or you signed up uh, and became an annual supporter. And I just want to kind of read through some reviews of it here. Uh, Jay Mood said, since I was listening to the podcast so much, I recognize how much work you have been doing, putting out extremely long episodes. And I felt like, uh, you know, I should contribute something. Uh, Tiramisu said, I thought about how much value the podcast added to my life. And I felt like it was the right to give you something in return. And I realized that paying nothing for a service that's helped me fall asleep uh, quickly and reliable for years. Uh, they wanted to do something different about that. Uh, Wonder Bard said, you know, I'm an annual subscriber and, uh, I, they moved to sleep with me plus, uh, because they saw how much care you put into the community, delivering amazing bonus content and continuing to make it feel like sleep with me is a top tier service. And as for sleep with me plus, I'm leveling the multiple feeds. It makes building my playlist a breeze and it makes sure I don't miss a single super deluxe episode. And finally, Stella said, uh, this is hundred percent vanity, but I wanted this podcast included in my Spotify rap at the end of the year, because there's no way I listen to anything more than I listen to this podcast at night. And, uh, the way it was set up before it didn't allow me to use Spotify, but now and on top of that, it's just separated into different blocks for bonus episodes, ad free episodes, story only episodes, makes things quick to find. And now I find I'm able to use uh, Spotify to listen to the podcast now. And I also also switch to, to become an annual subscriber. So thanks, everybody. Uh, and if any of that resonates with you, you give value out of the podcast. Maybe you want to listen to it a little bit different. Uh, you listen to story-only episodes or all intro episodes, or you just want to add free experience. Check out that free trial at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash plus. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast where I'll pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who support the sponsors, who take action. That's how we're able to be here for you free twice a week is those people. I know so many people enjoy this ad-supported uh, linear show, and I'm so glad we get to do it for you. And it's with the, all these people's help. So I want to thank Stephanie, who got a Helix bed. Let Helix know about it. Let me know about it. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie took that Helix quiz at helixsleep.com sleep. We're hoping to get Helix back as a sponsor this year. Uh, and it's because the listeners like he, uh, Stephanie supporting Helix, taking that quiz. So thank you, Stephanie. If you want to be like Stephanie, test a sponsor out, check a sponsor out, let them know about it. Let me know about it, especially on social media. Tag me, tag them. And I can try to thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone like Stephanie. So that's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the support you need right now. If you're in need of support right now, fill out, uh, just go to the show notes. There's links to resources, including international resources you could connect with. It's also about being a part of positive change, taking action, not just 
just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but taking action, learning more. There's links to resources. We could do that in the show notes, or you could join some of the things we're doing, supporting the Midnight Mission and people experiencing homelessness in Los Angeles, supporting the Trevor Project, and supporting Hand in Hand. Uh, so wherever your heart is, wherever your heart aches, uh, you could take action. You don't have to uh, help us uh, support one of those organizations, but you can, or you could go out there and support something else, you know, just to be a part of positive change. Uh, but you can always check out the show notes uh, for more information if you want to support one of those organizations and join us. And that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? This posty poster song sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes Ashley, too. Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bar. Don't forget, you want ad. You you say I want I want I prefer ad free experience. I prefer story only episodes, but I want it for free. You could earn it. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You just introduce people to the free podcast, and you could earn months of uh, ad free episodes of Sleep With Me and story only episodes of Sleep With Me and Sleep With Me Plus. That's Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside... Whatever's keeping you awake, it could be thoughts, you know, things on your mind about the past, the present, the future, you know, thoughts you're thinking about, thinking thoughts, uh, you know, you say, well, I was thinking about that, uh, that's what my brain says, right, uh, 10 minutes after I close my eyes, and it tries to act all in, I said, you know what I was just thinking about, and I said, no, like, uh, I do know what I, you're, you were just thinking about, because not only are you going to tell me, but I'm all, you're part of my brain. I don't know if that's ever a way, like, unless someone, like, someone's giving a compliment, but rarely, I mean, does my brain give out compliments without some sort of hidden agenda? You know what I was always thinking about? How, uh, you see, I struggle to even do that in that voice. It's, it's, uh, I mean, uh, I don't want to get too, I don't want to go deeper into those thoughts, but those could be some of the thoughts. You know, just real, it's another, it just, you know what I just realized? Or this will be 20 minutes after I close my eyes. Did you remember to, you know what you forgot to do? Uh, I was just wondering, did you double check the old, uh, then, you know, then you got 30 minutes into it. Uh, have you ever thought about the meaning of, uh, say no, I haven't. Uh, you ever wonder why most people, like, you ever think about the way you do the, and most people do Say no. Did you notice when we were blanket over here, the way people were looking? I say no. Yeah. Remember that time? So it could be thoughts. It could be feelings related to those thoughts. Uh, and the, here's the thing. The response to those thoughts in that part of me has got to be loving. Or, and <laughs> I don't know if that's bemused, but I say, there, there it goes again. Uh, like, uh, we love you. That's, I'm not kidding. That's why I call them brain bots. I don't know if that's a contemplative, that's a ruminator, that's the ruminator, right? Is that the ruminator part of my brain? That's the, it's a little pre-rumination. 
says, yeah, I got to get, I got to warm up our room. And, you know, I, I like to do, you know, I like to do a little ice breaking with ourselves, a little rumination icebreakers, uh, right. But we're alone in bed. And I already remember when, like 20 minutes ago, I turned out my light and, uh, pressed play on, well, that's why you press play on sleep with me. Cause I can enter, you know, this is my own brain, the creator of the show. Yeah, just got to warm up the old rumination. You know, we got to get out there, do a couple thousand laps of uh, thinking about this stuff. Uh, these problems aren't going to solve themselves. Uh, and I say, but you're like, that's what, that's what, that's what I've grown making the show. Cause I say, okay, I love you, man, but you're not qualified to, so- particularly right now is not the best time. And two, love you, but uh, you're pretty good at pre rumination which is not even a word, but, you know, you're great at that. You're great at posing questions to interrupt bedtime. And I don't know, like, like you know, in the old textbooks, they say you're maladaptive. I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying that's what they call it in the textbooks. I'm just seriously wondering, uh, like, uh, I, I, I would not want to, you know, I've never made a prequel. Uh, this is one prequel, the, the uh, I, by the power of pre-rumination, I'm the maladapter, and this is the pre this is the pre pre-rumination prequel. How to become the maladapter? I don't know. It's just uh, one day I want to live in a world where I could post questions. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you're my inverse because I'm here to keep people company and take their mind off of stuff. I never thought of that. So this is like that movie uh, with those two characters. Uh, and you're the guy, you're that one character, and I'm the other character. You follow, you're following me, right? Uh, yeah, it was, it, it, was a tr- it was a trilogy, but at the time it was only one movie. It was called, um, I don't know, it was, it was like, I think it was called Bruce Willis in a Raincoat, uh, or that's what I remember. Bruce Willis in, in a poncho. No, you're not following me. Okay, but Bruce Willow, I mean, Bruce Willow, not Bruce, Bruce Willis uh, is in the movie wearing a poncho in the rain and uh, never seen, I haven't seen, or you're not sure if that's true? Okay, well, so if you're thinking, it could be thoughts keeping you awake, it could be uh, feelings, any emotions coming up, it could be physical sensations, changes in time, temperature, routine. I'm recording this the day after a time change. Or I don't know, the day, I guess technically the day of, because it's Sunday. So um, it could be time, temperature, routine, whatever is travel, gas. The only reason I start running through all this stuff, and I guess I went on an early tangent about it, is that uh, so you know you're not alone. Even if your thoughts aren't like mine, and you like uh, you, maybe you could relate to some of how I, it feels because that's what's important to me is like uh, I don't know exactly what you're going through or what is keeping you awake, but I know for me, in the deep dark night, I can feel a little bit. Exa- I mean, obviously, I, exasperating, tiring, frustrating, lonely, and even if I don't know what you're going through, there's somebody listening right now who 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 has been something through something similar or very similar and who can relate to how you feel. And they're nodding along right now, really. They 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 say, "Yeah, that's tough. Uh, I've been there." And the other thing about this show is you deserve a good night's sleep. Uh, like you deserve a bedtime where you could get some rest, the rest you need as so your life feels more manageable. The rest you need so you can be out there flourishing. So I hope this show can provide that for you. If it can't or you decide it, 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 it isn't going to do that, make sure to check out sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. It's got other uh, sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there because you still deserve a good night's sleep. And if you, even if this show or you don't like the show or it doesn't work for you. But for most people, it does take a couple of tries to get used to. I mean, I did hear from somebody yesterday. They said, oh, I, lo- I got it on my first try because my brain is similar to yours. Uh, but but not every- a lot of people, they come with expectations because this show is it's just it's structured differently. It sounds differently than probably what you expected. I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents, which means I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to forget what I was talking about. Then I'll repeat myself. 
Then I'll double back. I'll say, wait, what was it? So like, uh, I mean, just like I already did, like uh, go on a tangent, follow a string of thoughts and realize I'm, then I'm, uh, then I'm like a kitty kid. Then he said, you're like a little kitten caught in a ball of yarn. There was a time, I mean, there was a, like a, kittens in yarn used to be a major marketing vehicle. I think before YouTube, when you could just, or, or now, whatever, whatever on the internet where you could find, you know, if you need a stream of cute kittens or cute animals playing with things, it's pretty readily available. That's, I guess, a freedom we have that I haven't thought about being grateful for. I mean, luckily, I don't spend a lot of time looking up cute kitten videos or whatever. Uh, I got enough in my brain, but because I watched so many commercials with them, they, like kittens could sell fabric softener. Um, I don't know what else they like, uh, other things associated with softness or cuteness, which would pretty much be anything in the eighties or in the nineties. They said, okay, let's say, okay, let's start our first meeting here. How much is, how much is this vehicle going to cost? Oh, $88,000. Okay. All right. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, we're going to need eight kittens and eight balls of yarn. Luxury. I need luxury kittens and luxury yarn. And we'll get this car sold and it won't be a problem. Uh, believe me, we know what we're doing. Uh, but yeah, we'll need We'll need a lot of kittens for the, or maybe cats. Uh, hmm. How about this? A mother, we, we like, uh, Call up, uh, call up the team we used last time. We're gonna need a uh, one of those cat, a mother cat giving a, one of the kittens a bath. Uh, and again, lo- like the, the finest, the finest looking yarn, you know, cinematic yarn. You know, call cinematic yarn. That's the only company to call because they have the most cinematic. Like, is the like uh, what a fo- photogenic yarn? Haven't heard of them. I don't know, though. We're not taking still photos, so I don't know. I mean, we may need cinematic. Well, okay, here's the thing. We'll get them both. Uh, clients are always right, of course. Polar? No, no. No, trust me. It's kitten. Kittens Kittens are nothing. This is uh, the kitten agency, you know? Right? Our tagline is, are you kidding me? We'll, we'll sell it. Uh, soap, cars, uh, uh, fabric, so- fabric softener, already sold. Uh, but... Uh, Toilet TP, you know, um, well, no, I mean, here's the thing. We'll sell it, uh, but uh, not with kittens. Kitten agency. Are you kidding me? Has somebody already gotten that one? Quit kitten around, man, and get to the sleep podcast. Oh, boy. It doesn't take much. This show's barely humorous if you're new here. Uh, Structurally, what to expect. Me going off topic with... uh, Things that are similar to jokes, but it's mostly me just kidding around. Is it? I've been never in 1,200 plus episodes and never realized that kidding and kitten had the same syllables, or have I done this tangent? So, yes, Scoots, five intros ago, you did it. Oh, bummer. Uh, gotta be, you must be kidding me. Made a kitten out of you and me, eh? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, or we're going to need 11 kittens then. Okay, so um, what was I saying? Oh, structure the show. So show start. Oh no, no. First, we got to tell you. Well, let's go through the structure of the show. It's very intentional the structure of this podcast, and that's only because of the way most people listen. But it's also very flexible as you become a regular listener. So most people just like to start the podcast playing, and they're getting ready for bed. They like the free ad supported version. And they start listening to the teaser, which is like, it goes, uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Because then they say, oh, there's scoots. Uh, there's something familiar. There's something welcoming. Or if you knew, you say, oh, I might check that show out. Uh, then there's support, which uh, a lot of listeners like. Because they say, oh, it's, uh, I don't have to pay for the show. And I know it's going to be there when I need it. Then there's this intro, which is long and meandering. And it only puts a small percentage of people to sleep. For most people, it's part of their wind down or getting ready for bed or unwinding uh, time. So, um, and, and, and so, like, it's meant to ease you into bedtime, not so much to put you to sleep. So if you don't like a couple of things you want to adjust, like if you listen all night long or you prefer an ad-supported version or you don't like the intros, 
then you might want to look at Sleep With Me Plus. But for most people, it, it eases them into bedtime. Then there's support. Then there'll be our bedtime story, which will be a, a episode of Journey into the World of Friends. So that's the structure of the show. Uh, this is a podcast you kind of just barely listen to, kind of like background noise. It's also, it doesn't put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep to take your mind off of stuff. There's no pressure to fall asleep here. I'm going to be here for over an hour so that you don't have to, you say, oh, there's plenty of time. And I'm just here to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company. Like I said, there are people who listen to the show all night long or listen during the day or people who can't fall asleep or who people who turn the show on in the middle of the night. So I'm here keeping you company, whether you're awake or asleep to the very end. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar bestie, your day boar, your boar bee, your boar burr, your boars, your boar bud, your boar friend. Just here to talk, talk and talk and talk and talk and barely make it, you know, just do a little bit of kitten around gratuitous overuse of things that amuse me. Like when I mispronounce amuse bush, uh, you say, do you have any amuse bush? Well, here's the thing. We'll have kitten. We'll get uh, Richard Blaze in, uh, in a sweater that matches the kittens. And uh, he'll have, uh, you know, some sort of new, um, you know, uh, cat friendly amuse bush or amuse bush. And that won't make it, you know, that's uh we do, that's uh, just something I made up. I don't know what we could. I mean, maybe if you said that's the new kitten, you know, that's the new thing for cats. Uh, you say, okay, do you really need to uh, advertise? Well, if, what if Richard Blaze has a new cat food out uh, called uh, Moose? I don't know. I can't think of anything like uh, funny or interesting to call it. Uh, Meow, a meow, a meow's bush. There you go, a meow's bush. <laughs> she'd say, he'd say, he'd say, like, I don't think anybody would say, I don't know about that. Uh, maybe in a dream it would be good, though. Meow's bush. It sounds pretty good after you give, you got to give it a few tries. So it's all, it's that old slow marketing. A meow's bush. It's a tail, it's a tail of an, a kitten who was named a moose bush. Uh, and something else, I don't know. I make stories to make people fall asleep or keep them company while they fall asleep. So, uh, yeah, so I'm just here to be your friend in the deep, dark night and keep you company while you drift off. Uh, structure the show. I think that's, I already covered that. Uh, give the show a few tries, see how it goes. It's just natural. When most people get here, they expect somebody calm and, uh, dare I say, uh, something a little bit more straightforward and focused. And yeah, the, like that's why I have sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you because there is other stuff out there. But this is the show, where are you, Where else are you going to get a meow's boosh where somebody's kitting around? I mean, you're telling me like, like that's not mildly amusing. So just go ahead and say it with me, a meow's boosh. Uh, I mean, they have cat cafes, so... Put it on the menu, man. I mean, uh, well, what is in it? I don't know. Like a cat, some sort of fancy, what is, don't they have fancy feast? Put some fancy feast in a uh, cat safe, a champagne, a, a champagne glass that's actually a cat bowl, not a real champagne glass. And now, uh, yeah, like one of those ones, but a cat bowl that looks like a champagne glass that's cat friendly, obviously. And there you go. It's um, like you don't even, it doesn't even have to have anything to, other than, here, I just got Richard Blaze a job selling Fancy Feast. Uh, is that still a cat food that's round? That's it. Like, uh, he said, well, what's that, Richard? It's a Meow's Boosh Fancy Feast. It's for cats. Uh, it's a fancy cat food or it's cat food with fancy title. It's a Meow's Boosh. We're not kitten around here. Kitten, what did I call it? Whatever. Kitten, kitten, and kitten. Yeah, the only one of the well, one of the many, many imaginary businesses in my brain. The first, uh, well, no, no, we don't advertise to cats, by the way. We just use kittens in marketing. That's why we're kitten, kitten, and kitten. And 
Yeah, we've only done two campaigns thus far, and this intro sleep with me. Maybe three that one scooter forgot about. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate your time and, and coming by. If you're new, just give the show a few tries. You got nothing to lose. Uh, Meow's Boosh, you know, other than like you say, like hope for a respectable, you know, straightforward intro. But yeah, give it a few tries, see how it goes. I'm really glad you're here. I work really hard here in Nice Drive. I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody. It is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, AquaTrue. And, you know, whether it's an ice cold glass of water, it's my coffee, it's lemonade for me and my daughter, or it's going to my dog's bowl. I don't want to have to think about what's in the water. I know how important drinking water is uh, to stay healthy, to stay hydrated. But I want to protect my daughter, my dog, and myself from many unhealthy contaminants. You know, according to extensive research by the environment, Environmental Working Group, virtually every home in America has harmful contaminants in its tap water. And that's why you got to check out AquaTrue. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no installation or plumbing. It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFASs in your water supply. And I'm grateful AquaTrue is certified to remove these contaminants. You know, I love my AquaTrue carafe or carafe. I don't know, a beautiful glass pitcher, uh, but they have water purifiers to fit every type of home. Installation-free countertop purifiers like the one I have to higher capacity under the sink options. And the filters are affordable and long lasting. There's no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months to two years. But really what it comes down to for me is peace of mind. I drink a lot of water. My dog drinks a ton of water. My daughter does too. And oh boy, does a nice cold glass of water sound delicious, doesn't it? Uh, so get yourself an AquaTrue. AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and even makes a great gift. And today, my listeners receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier when you go to AquaTrue. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U dot com and use that promo code SLEEP. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue dot com and use the promo code sleep that's s-l-e-e-p thanks everybody all right boys scoots here this is uh should be <laughs> this is scheduled to be the finale of our uh season of episodically modular series which i get i get it that's like a double on tundra or whatever they scoots you got yourself another double on tundra and I'd say, thanks for making up a word, brain. I like it. You're true. You're, and you're correct. That's a correct usage of an imaginary word, if I've ever heard one, which I probably have 1,200 plus times. But yeah, it is double entendre because uh, how does a episodically modular, what's, well, one, you may be asking yourself, what's episodically modular? Two, how could that have a finale? Don't worry, I'll explain it to you. So this is our series, Journey into the World of Friends. Episodically modular means you can listen to it in any order, or you could just listen to one episode. Now, while they are interrelated and do build on one another, a little secret I learned from uh, large businesses is uh, anything before that's a prequel. And uh, you could consider this, you know, volume whatever. I don't know. Oh, this one won't have a number because... uh, the last episode was 12, if you catch my drift. So this is the finale. Or you could consider it episode 14, because we also had a holiday special. Um, so how, whatever works for you. But every episode building up to this uh, was just a prequel. And then you could go back and enjoy them in any order. The reason is the characters will catch us up on most of the details. And yeah, I hear from a lot of people that listen to them out of order. So, uh, but you know, if you're, if you are a person that well, I prefer to listen to it in order, I guess you could set the sleep timer for like 30 minutes and then, um, in foot, you could fall asleep. Uh, you have my permission to stop paying attention. How about that? Uh, I promise to go on, on and on for another 10 or 15 minutes. And then you could listen to episode one later on, uh, or if you support the show directly, some people like listen to the story only episodes or the compilation episodes. But if you're new, just see how it goes. That's the beauty episodically modular. 
is uh, you, it, it, uh, it's no pressure. You could fall asleep, but, but there's no pressure to fall asleep, no pressure to listen, no pressure for any of this to make sense. Uh, and talk about no pressure and a beautiful voice and presence. It's time for our Hollywood an- our announcer from the Hollywood area, our announcer associated with Hollywood. I mean, I w- would I want ho- any Holly without it? No. Uh, I would want my Holly and my, like, my Jolly, even though this is post-holiday season. Uh, I w- won't be Jolly. And it wouldn't be, wouldn't be quite Holly, it wouldn't be Hollywood without our announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. As the friends beyond the binary, as the boys and girls say, it's time to journey for a final time. Except when Scooter recaps things yet again in his creative process. It's time for our last journey for to, to write this moment when I'm speaking into the world of friends. Yippee. Yay. Thanks. That's Mr. Ant- uh, Antonio Banderas. We are going to play. Uh, he doesn't know this. Uh, if he can remain perfectly, not perfectly still. I mean, I'm realistic. Uh, if he could re- remain stiller than most people on the planet for the next hour and 30 minutes, then we'll play some Jaipur, which uh, I played once two nights ago and I like was not victorious. But that doesn't mean I should be have victory tonight either. Maybe I'll learn from my mistakes. Maybe you'll teach me something new by having victory over me, Antonio. So please don't, you know, please play. Please don't move. You know, please, I need you as quiet as possible while I record. But I want a full Antonio experience when we play Jaipur later. Speaking of friendship, this is a journey into the world of friends. All right, this is Zell. And uh, I just want to um, thanks everybody for gathering here. Number five, number Mary Bear Bot, number 11. Uh, I'm Zell, working class warrior of our party, of our group of friends uh, gathered here right now uh, in the ha- deep below the handy halls of uh, a journey into the world of friends within the land of leisure. I think we've moved into the final stage of this adventure, and I'm here with our other warrior, uh, our, uh, w- 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 you could call him, you, you'd find him in plate armor or in a robe, and uh, jockeying for a throne. It's uh, Lord Von Chill. Uh, no need. To, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to run this meeting, though. Thanks to Lord Von Chill for that nod of your head. Next to Lord Von Chill. Fleet of foot, nimble of fingers, dexter- high dexterity, mo- silent in motion, but not when we need her to speak. Uh, Granada of Darmok. You'll attempt a, 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 a wide, arms open or w- open wide. I am trying to learn uh, some of the phrases from uh, Granada's culture. And, you know, if you're not feeling great, uh, we have our Florentian nurse who follows the three Florences, uh, Eleanor. And then, of course, our our wizard and uh, someone, uh, yeah, someone in our party that uh, I have a history with. Uh, not, well, not the only one, I guess. Uh, but right now, that history has been set aside so we can focus on... Um, I, I thought it had been set aside till this moment, but you know I'm allowed to do. Th- I'm allowed to have my feelings, and move through my feelings at the same time, and that's something I've learned from our wizard Wada. We're here. Uh, oh, also we have two security bots uh, who seem to be sentient beings. Um, we're here in the journey into the world of friends, a boat, what was in the before the before time, a boat based attraction within the land of leisure in Florida, uh, where people would go on vacation, I guess, and sit in a boat and the boat would journey through a world of friends, a manufactured world in different rooms themed around different parts of the planet, uh, where plush animatronic friends would dance and sing and perform uh, over and over again the song Journey into the World of Friends at different times in the history of the attraction, different styles of the song. 
but always a catchy, popular song about the lessons of friend, basics of French friendship 101. I guess they didn't call it that, uh, but uh, you know what? Does anybody? What does everybody think of that? Rename the track? No. Uh, okay, I don't need any commentary. I can figure it out. No, who would want to ride an attraction called Friendship One? Journey into the World of Friends does sound more like a. Oh, because Friendship One Hundred One is more like sounds like a class. Could that be? Could could we just could we could someone write that on a on something a chalkboard or something somewhere just for my own pleasure? Okay, go. Oh, it is on a chalkboard. Thank you, Mary Bear. So we're beneath the handy halls, of uh, the, which is underneath the attraction. We're actually not in the handy halls. We're in the room for security. And uh, why are we here? Well, uh, w- once upon a time, we were on a mission from the Baron of the Boyle, the ruler of Florida, uh, who had united the state uh, or the net, whatever this area, like uh, restoring the free flow of water from north to south. Previously, you know, the water had been an area where people could control the state by, or at least the southern parts of the state by controlling the water. Even though in the before the before time, uh, they had put these mechanisms in place uh, to ensure the free flow of water and the efficient flow of water, which is somehow different than the natural flow of water. I guess for, anyway, I'm going off topic, but the water is one of the most important parts that we've been looking and talking of what we're going to do. But yeah, we were sent here by the Baron of the Boyle to restore the free flow of water, which was interrupted by someone named Vidul, a cool-blooded being, relations to dragons, but a uh, humanoid like us, ma- powerful magic user. Vidul, and it turns out the son of the Baron of the Boyle, were in cahoots uh, to control not only the free flow of water, but also... Uh, which we kind of knew coming in, uh, there's something else at work, right? Which is this portal or well, a spiritual well uh, and portal. Uh, anyone? Everybody's shrugging. We think it connects to another world or it's a stopover. Isn't that the theory we figured out? Maybe it's a stopover or something when you go, for example, I am a, a earthbound being. My name is Zell. Uh, well, that's not entirely true, but in this world, uh, I am Zell, a uh, uh, earth based being. That's confusing. So, if I was to move on from my earth based existence, one thing people like a character who named Zell in this world may say, Well, I'm going to move on to the big farm in the sky. Now, this well may be a place where either you do you you do that your 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 non earth based being ship uh, or beinghood, and but anyway, there's a blockage or something going on. So all these, but it also ends up that uh, like oil and water, uh, better intentioned spiritual based beings and uh, more clo- like short sighted clo- spiritual based beings separate like oil and water somehow. So there seems to be a concentration uh, on the top of very, uh, positive b- spiritual based beings. Maybe that's capped off with actual water, but then beneath that, at least this is a working theory, right? Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, is there's also a concentration of, uh, Negative intention based being negative, and you know what I'm saying. And they're trying to get out. Uh, also, they're very powerful. So, Vidul's plan was to kind of uh, control those beings uh, and also control the water and hence control Florida and, and our world beyond. And maybe another world, which was the world we actually came from as adventurers, which was the after the, there's the before the before time, uh, we're currently in the before time, this adventure. So after the before time, then we're, but we're in the after the before, before we're in the, we're in the, we came from our time, which is after both before times. But it's not exactly the after time. It's after the after time because after the two before times came, uh, she came uh, and kind of helped put the world back in balance. Then came our time. So it would have been 
There's the before time. That's when Florida and Andalusia were around. Now there's the before the before. No, that was the before the before time. Then there's the before time. Florida and Andalusia kind of went wild and uh, became a time when adventurers could roam and adventure. That's what, you know, that, that's what we were into. Some may have thought it was a fictional time and the before the before time too, but turns out it's not because we're here, even though originally we were from the after, after time. I may be getting my timelines mixed up. It would have been easier, but they don't have, there's no unified uh, time anyway. They don't even, the people in this time don't even know about either of the after times, but now Mary Bear and this other bot do. So hopefully your, your servos can handle it. Uh, anyway, why was I talking about that? Uh, I don't know. So we're here to help, uh, I guess. And uh, so, oh, so Vidul is going to control this spiritual well or portal and control the beings within it to take over Florida. Florida, they, the, the, I know the pr pronunciation. Okay, so um, we wanted to stop Vidul. We found out maybe Vidul was working with this uh, somewhat escaped, uh, not good, well-intentioned spiritual dragon who seems to be, like, very focused on time, but also, like, it's very exhausting or something for this. It's kind of out of the portal, but maybe not 100% out of the portal. And so those two are working together. Uh, but we also, I think, came to the conclusion currently, what are we going to do? So Vidul wants to take over the world. The dragon wants to take over the world. But first they want to let all their, well, the dragon wants to let all their friends out and maybe also take over the other world or, well, we don't know. We're just uh, making best guesstimates. Vidul, a little bit simpler. Vidul wants to use the power of the well and the power of water uh, to take over this world. And maybe the world we came from, which is the after, after time. So... We're going to stop Vidul and the dragon. Vidul is using these gems that attract... Okay, oh, another important thing I totally forgot about. Uh, whenever this portal or well got clogged, I don't know if I mentioned that, the uh, beings that were making a transition, they would just come back into this world and they would go into... Uh, they made... That's how... So the journey in the world of friends was once animatronic figures. Now the animatronic figures have gained life. Uh, they uh, are now spiritually based animatronic beings. Uh, and again, that's beyond my comprehension. So don't even ask me any possible, you know, how is it possible? Mary Bear is moving, right? It just, just is. Uh, so for example, let's say, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like if I was to, 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 to let's just say, I'll, I'll just use myself an example. This isn't foreshadowing. So nobody worry. All will be well. I was to move on to the big farm in the sky. Then I find out this well's clogged. Maybe I bounce back somehow because if the top is like the top layer is, uh, positive beings, maybe they catch me and throw me back. Then I land in like, uh, a, a cuddles the koala. And then I, like, so normally I'd be going to another realm, but then I would live in the next stage of my existence as it cuddles the koala in, uh, in this world journey into world of friends, which at the current time is not the best place to be because we're all working for Vidul. And cuddles the koala has a right to a uh, quality of life or to, for their, for the, to live their next stage of existence, not at the behest of uh, dominant non-positive intention beings. So that's like part of our mission here is, uh, now we did try to figure out like, so in the after time, I don't know, there's not a lot of this is in written history, but that the attractions did come to light, like, or had some sentience. So, so this is not all like, uh, outside of, even though it's outside of the realm of understanding, it's not outside of our realm. But so anyway, we've got to fix this. How do we fix it? Well, oh, to go back. So Vidul has these gems, these magical gems that act like a, a, a spiritual magnet, I guess, or spirit magnet. Uh, and that, so 
let's say I was to bounce back and, 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 and somehow I bounce off the, this, again, this is all just, you know, I'm just doing my best with the facts I have, which aren't much like trampoline. I, I go, I, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to big farm. But then I bounce a very soft trampoline supported by love and friendship that bounces me back into this world my my spiritual base being so probably a different trampoline or maybe it's a little bit easier to trampoline now normally i just end up okay you're close to cuddles of koala cuddles of koala is open spiritually open to your presence uh go on in next thing i know i'm cuddles of koala somewhat random i would say maybe geographic i don't know but everybody's kind of in agreement with that but Vidul has a, a, a gem, and also you can make it resonant with someone in this world, but that's for later. Uh, but that gem would act as a magnet, so then I would end up in, like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, that loving Lazard, uh, like uh, in the say, Larry the loving Lazard, and uh, then I'd end up there uh, if the gem was in Larry. That makes sense, right? So our plan, so Vidul seems like Vidul has a plan to double cross the dragon. And the double crossing is going to go with, uh, the dragon needs a host, I guess. And so Vidul is going to try to trick the dragon into going into some, into Mary Bear? I don't know. I didn't follow everything. And, because, uh, yeah, we put Mary Bear, Mary Bear was in a jar with her gem. So, uh, Vidul's planning on doing that. So I think our current plan is to double switch on Vidul. But then I think we were talking this morning is like, uh, cause we did another round of no bad, I all, all bad ideas, no bad ideas. And one of the b bad ideas we came up with is what if we turn the tables on Vidul and help the dragon drag on. And, uh, and, and so then we said, well, what if, uh, we take a gem, like, because we have some copies of these gems to fool Vidul, and we put it in Vidul's pocket and kind of put a little resonant, like Wada said, can kind of replicate the, th the, the spells, but it won't be an actual full magnet. But if we put that in uh, Vidul's pocket and then tell the dragon on Vidul, so Granada, you're going to do that now while we talk about the rest of the plan. Okay. So Granada's going to do, do some fleet of foot action and put a gem in Vidula's pocket. Okay, so you'll be back. So then at the same time we're doing that and also to create a distraction, uh, we're going to put on Mary Bear and the friends are going to put on a show. They're also going to have gems. Uh, luckily, there was like a couple scenes in this attraction that had giant like vats of f f fake plastic gems. And we don't know what the, the dragon's web, you know, like eyesight is like. So then what we'll do is, uh, during the show, we'll, t we're, we're, like the show will reveal the, the, the Vidul's double cross the dragon. As soon as the dragon's ire is focused on Vidul, like we have this ticking clock for the water. We're going to use the water to cover up the portal. Uh, which it was covered up with already, but Vidul's trying to make it so that uh, Vidul w will, um, uh, like, have control. But Mary Bear and the security bot, like, are logged into these systems, right? Uh, or, like, uh, maybe spiritual based. Okay, that's fine. Also, you got lasers. So you're going to laser also Vidul's... Oh, the security bot already did that. Okay, lasered some weaknesses. So Vidul's plans are not going to work, probably. Okay, so when the water does get released, according to this countdown, uh, the, pu par the pu park will flood. There'll be more water back. The water will be fully restored over this spiritual well. And uh, then we'll also be, like, this part of the park will be even, the park won't flood because we found all these, like, uh, extra canals and retention basins when we looked at the mapping. And the Mary Bear and the security bot have been able to kind of map that, figure that out. Uh, it, I don't understand what vacuum tubes or solid state is, but it seems to work. So basically this part of the park will be like, uh, 
like about a third, we're about a third of the land of leisure will be isolated even further, but the water will still be free flowing. So then we'll just have to deal with Vidul and the dragon. But at that point, it'll be too late. The dragon seems to be like, uh, at some point, like if we can just last as a team and keep distracting, we're hoping when the dragon's more cut off from the well that the dragon will lose power. But we can also use the dragon's gem to pull the dragon into something, like give, the, give something sentience. We don't want to use Mary Bear. So we are going to have to figure that on the fly because we don't have anything this second. Uh, we'd also like to put Vidul, like a spiritual based being, in a jar, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I mean, but we could still retain Vidul and then bring Vidul to uh, to the Baron of the Boil. Oh, okay. Granada, you're back. What do you have in your hand? That's a wand. Universal. Universal wand, huh? Wada, you know what this wand is? Wada studying the wand. Okay, Wada, what do you think? Okay, what do, what do you mean it's a portal wand? This must be how we got here? What do you mean? Okay, so that wand creates a portal. It can only be used twice, and it's been used once. Oh, that's what that marking means. So this, if the holder of the wand... Okay, you're showing us. That's, yeah, that's our where or the living room where we used to game in. That's where we came from. That is real. No, 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 don't cross through there. Okay, we could cross through as a party to there. And you're thinking that's how Vidula got us there, some sort of charm, and then let us through this portal. Could it portal to another place? It could. I mean, where else would we want to go but home? You're right. But, like, uh, it can only be used once. Uh, but, it, like, it has a reasonable amount of time, so we could all cross through there together. Like, what if we wanted to bring number five with us? We could. Okay. Wait a second. So that means we can go home after this. This is great news. Uh, so let's uh, Great job, Granada. Okay, so we understand everything, every, our plan. Mary Bear, you've gotten news to all the friends. Oh, they've already started the show. So we're, let's, okay, so we're heading up. And, uh, okay. Oh, wow. The dragon and Vidul are already here. Uh, and, uh, they're, they're like, uh, oh, they're working together right now. So they don't know we're, we're about us yet. Uh, okay. They, but they're probably they're suspicious now. Oh, Vidul saw us. Yeah. But, okay. Let's, uh, the friends are still singing. Okay. Oh, this is the part where they blame Vidul. Uh, the dragon's coming towards us too. Hey, Vidul. Hey, dragon. Uh, Oh, wait, maybe you want to pay attention as part of the show. Hey, um, uh, uh, Lord Von Chill, see if you could get, uh, the, um, uh, wait a second. Like, see, like, there's the Baron of the Boils. son is now one of those, um, beings with the, uh, red nose and the big shoes. There's another being up there. We'll put Vidul's gem in there just in case. Okay. Okay. But what about the dragon's gem? Oh, the, well, don't worry about us. The the friends are actually doing a show that's pretty applicable to your plans. Uh, see? Oh, wow. What, I, I'm interpreting that dance. Uh, it seems to be about geology and the poorest geology of the state of Florida. Yeah, huh? that's interesting. You know, I wonder who else is into geology. Uh, they're, they're dancing pretty gleefully. Is that, are they saying they'll be the, the new uh, baron of the world? Uh, because, all, oh, so, the, oh, what is that, a lock? Like, so that's a new lock. Uh, well, those are old locks, but that part is new. That's what everybody's been building. I mean, you knew about that, right, Dragon? Okay. But you, um, oh, but, but Vidul can control it. Uh, because it can close. You thought it was just to guide the water. No, no, it's to close and open. So when Vidul needs the well, like, uh, it'll be closed. But most of the time it'll be open, so the well will be covered up. Oh, how would Vidul stop at that, like you? I don't know. Have you ever heard of these, like, magnetic renaissance, like, uh, what is it called, Barham, Barham's Gems before? 
Oh, you have. Uh, I don't know. Can you sense any of those, like, uh, well, you sense them everywhere? Because I think Vidul's got one. Vidul, why don't you reach your hand in your pocket? Oh, Vidul, you kind of seem uh, caught. Uh, is that a gem? Okay, now the, oh boy. I didn't expect that, uh, or I guess I should have. Good, oh, there's Vidul. Vidul's spiritually transferred into that, uh, up there with the Baron of Boyle's son. So Vidul, oh, they're, uh, Lord Vancho, what is it? Oh, they're, st they're, they're up there together now, but they can't, uh, they're, they're attached to the balloon. So they're not, they, they're, uh, I talked to the Baron of Boyle's son, so a nice kid, but, uh, just, you know, misguided. So Vidul's up there now. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, good. Now the friends are doing the part where they all have, which one's the dragon's gem? Does anybody know? Okay, well, you could, okay, let's start rolling, because now we're encountering the dragon. Okay, we are taking um, some, well, this is, okay, so this is like, uh, oh, boy, that's some powerful mist. Uh, it has different temperatures, and uh, this is not easy on our party, but this is the adventure we kind of uh, signed up for. Okay, oh, good move, Granada. Okay, um, so what, like, uh, we still don't have a place to put the, and, uh, we're moving the, the dragon's gem around right between all the friends. So the dragon can't sense it. Okay. So, okay. So that's okay. Now the dragon's looking over there. Uh, okay. When, the, when the gem gets back, we have to put it in something. Uh, oh, wait a second. What's the dra dragons? Oh, the water's released. Okay. Yeah, I can feel the rushing of the water. We're just going to have to trust that Mary bear, uh, has that, uh, like, uh, oh, the, the dragon seems to think that the gate is closed, but, uh, doesn't know that it's been lasered. So we should be fine. Uh, the dragon seems to be laughing though at us him listening. Can you hear us? Oh boy. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You've already lost. Uh, and by the way, Wada and Eleanor are taking your gem. Wait a second. So that's one of the boats from the attraction over there. It's uh, not, not in water, but it uh, it has a face and eyes. I think if you stick it in its mouth, uh, what is that? The uh, fr oh, those all the boats had cutesy names. That's SS Friendship Floats. Uh, so yeah, there's the dragons getting pulled into the boat uh, of the attraction, and uh, oh, that's weird rumbling. I think I wonder if that's the water. I mean, this has went really well. Thank you, friends. Yeah, let's cheer. Uh, I can see the eyes of the boat moving. Hi, Dragon. You're now uh, the SS uh, Friendship Floats. Uh, you're in dry dock. You're kind of stuck on land, but you're a boat at least. And uh, you're, you seem to be frown. You're, you're frown. Oh, you're not frowning. You're laughing. Okay, there's a little bit more rumbling than I would expect with the water. Uh, oh, here, here comes Mary, ba Mary Bearbot. Mary Bearbot, everything looking good? N okay, well, everything with the water. Okay, but yeah, there seems to be some other thing. Oh boy, is that the roof getting opened up? Okay, that seems to be the clock tower from the front of the attraction has come to, to uh, huh. Okay, a little hole in our theory. What if there, hey, Mary Bear, any idea if there's different sized spiritual beings? Yes. Okay. And that clock tower is about the size of the mist dragon. Since we've only encountered one mist being on natural or spiritual, n n you know, naked spiritual being. I mean, a dra if a, dra you know, if, if, if a dragon's in its own skin, scales. Okay, so maybe this makes sense for our beliefs. So, okay, oh boy, the clock tower is laughing at us. Uh, what is it saying? It's spinning its clock face. It's going to dig a hole. On, it knows that we laser. Okay, it was listening. So it knows we lasered the lock uh, so that, but it's going to dig a hole through the porous. Oh boy. So I guess that geology wasn't that great. Uh, 
it'll, it says it'll be back. Uh, wait, can you tell, can you explain us your plan again? Cause I'm not following it. Okay. So the water is about to rush over like, uh, and, and kind of permanently create a swamp over the, um, well. Oh, and the well. Oh, why are you la Okay. So the well is about to burst anyway. So you're going to build because the water's already, okay. And you're going to drain the water around. Oh, because you can dig holes since you're giant. Oh, yeah. I guess I didn't. That's a well made clock face. So, um, okay. So, wait a second. So, you, you're going to dig a hole. Oh, like around. Like you're going to dig some tunnels. Oh, because it's porous. Huh. Well, that doesn't bode well for us. So, you're just going to kind of. Go around around both sides of the well, and then the water, and then the water. But you don't care about the flow of water anyway, as long as you free the well. Oh, and then the like, uh, oh, the drier the well gets, some more it's gonna burst. Okay. Hey, uh, Mayor Bear, what is it? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Wada. Isn't isn't that doesn't that clock have a, like? Uh, here's a question. Uh, like what, 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 like, uh, I wonder, I don't even think uh, like, uh, that, uh, like, uh, I don't know if Zell, I almost had an idea. I got it. I got it. Wada. That's good. You know what? Drag on, go do what you want. I don't think you could actually, like, if I said, what time is it? And I picked it. I don't think you actually have, I don't think your clock face could actually dig holes through porous limestone. So like, uh, if I said it, it's 12 PM or 12 AM, I don't think you could have, oh, there it is. It's 12, uh, 12. Oh, there's a ringing. What, what, the clock tower seems confused. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the, oh boy, this is, uh, interesting. I forgot there was a show within the clock tower. And, uh, okay, what is it, Wada? The water is not going to make it in time to, uh, before the, um, so I have an idea. What is it? I mean, because the, the, the friends are taking over the clock tower. Can, can I just, t t t go, can I just make sure that the, oh, and then I'll, you can tell me your plan. Do we have t five minutes? Barely. Okay. Um, so yeah, the friends, I didn't realize there was sentient, the, 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 the dragon did not realize, or, and I didn't realize there's sentient friends living in the clock tower and they've just been waiting to put on their show until it was 12 or whatever, one, two, three, four, because the clock's never been at a proper time. So now they're doing the show, which I think takes about 10 minutes, but also they're um, clearly, I don't know, it's like a biome or something, like they're interconnected. So the dragon like uh, doesn't have full control anyway. And also they're singing that song right on the dragon. Um, I don't know. It looks like it tickles. Dragon, does it tickle? It does. Uh, so it's like the dragon's being tickled. Okay, Mary Bear and the security bot are working on, they, they think that the clock is some sort of uh, um, half-life based. Uh, the, oh, that leakage we saw. So the clock should run forever? It'll need to be tuned up and lubed and greased. Okay, but you could do that. Uh, someone can. Okay. Okay, so the friends are going to tick, tickle the dragon, and the dragon, I, I don't know why we didn't realize that the dragon would be like that. Okay, go ahead, Wad. I'm sorry, I was monopolizing time. I was just making sure this obstacle is clear. Okay, so yeah, the next obstacle, everybody gather around because we got to talk about this. Uh, so I'm, monitor, I'm monitoring the, the magical energy, and yeah, I don't think the water... Uh, is going to be here in time because again, we, we, we opened all those other locks. So the whole park is filling up and isolating this part of the park. But before that happens, like I think the pent up energy of being temporarily freed and maybe the dragon stirring it up means that whatever's on the top of the well and not just the good spirits, but the ones below that are going to, um, like, like I can kind of see it. I'm watching it, like through Matt. You know, just trust me. 
Yeah, you do look drained, like you're really, fo- yeah, I'm focused and trying to talk at the same time. So um, when that kind of all off gas is at once, it won't matter. The, they're going to go like, uh, there's probably some other really large beings in there and medium sized beings and human sized beings. And there's a lot more negative based ones than positive based ones. And they won't just land in the park. They'll land around the area. And then we'll have, then they'll probably just come back and like, uh, we're going to be in, we're going to be into it. Oh, go ahead, Eleanor. Okay. But the one thing we learned is like, once the beings are here, they're, um, they're, they can't leave their attraction like Mary Bear. I mean, they could go outside for a few minutes. So like the dragon, like, I think we're fine now. Like the friend, like this is becoming its own ecosystem. But so the, if stuff off gases into the park, it'll be fine because it'll be pulled into attractions. Even the large ones would be pulled into the attractions themselves. Right. The issue is the stuff that gets outside of the park. I don't know what will happen. Will it be a giant tree and then it could come walk back? Then it could open up the rest of the portal. Could, could it be a castle? It might not be. There might be something about the park itself. Uh, oh, because it's like a simulation of life. Uh, I don't know. But um, my my thought is, and this means we can't. This means we can't ever go home. We use the wand to create a portal into this section of the park because it's already going to be like an its own island. And it's got the rest of this kingdom of magic, and then the, um, another a couple other parts. There, there was other parks other than this within the land of leisure. So, like I said, about a third of the land of leisure, like we could release all of them into that part. Like I, we could use the portal to guide, like to kind of like drain the balloon into the park that the part of the park we're in, and that would use up the wand though, so we couldn't go home. Lord Von Chilier. Also, we would um, then become rulers of a kingdom of sentient theme park attractions, theme park uh, uh, animatronics. And like, so I would like, so I would become the ruler of that land and you would be my, you would be my, is, is that what you're saying? No, not exactly. I mean, we couldn't go home. Is that what you're, do? you're are you deflecting that? Uh, par- partially, yes, uh, yes, uh, I mean, uh, or coming to terms with the fact that, uh, if I can't go home, I mean, I would have a kingdom to rule. This is what, it, no, you would, no, um, I mean, you could, you rule and you're, you're, uh, need to, uh, alleviate things with your own, you, yeah, I mean, that rules because it actually gave me some levity. Is everybody okay? So if we go home now or we stay here for, I mean, there's, is it, does anybody want, like, there's no choice, right? We're a team of adventurers. Okay. So we'll stay here and, uh, we'll, maybe we're here to set the table, even though maybe we're setting the table for her when she comes. Okay. Wada, you're doing it. You, so it's working. Okay. Well, um, I just like, uh, I guess on behalf of everybody, I'd want to send my, you know, I think this is going to work out. We're going to be, I don't know if this is what it was like when she got here though, but, uh, it was beings that needed help. Uh, so I think like, um, I don't know if we could talk to, uh, the three Florences and, um, Granada, I know you did like, uh, like you had different, um, like, uh, we're going to need help, right? Uh, if we're here and we'll have Mary Bear's help and number five, number five, thanks for sticking by us and, uh, humming. I mean, and basically we seem to have gotten what we wanted. It'd be nice if we could send letters home. Maybe we could find another magical artifact from Universal or wherever the, and, and, uh, be able to send letters home or something, but I know we're all kind of on our own anyway. That's how we found each other. 
and we're doing what we need to do, right, to make things better and to be a part of this. Oh, hi, Mary Bear. So, okay, so you have an update. Uh, okay, so, oh, the clock tower. Oh, you, like you can use tickling as a motivator. So you've reached a tickle truce with the dragon, who is now a cl like a clock tower. Oh, and the boats, if the attraction had, if the boats were moving. Well, here's the thing, Mary Bear. While you were gone, we found out that right now Wada's draining some of the, the, the well. And I guess we have to hope on the other side that they somehow get it unclogged. But we're draining the well into this kind of part of the park, and we're going to be here. We're going to stay here with all of you because it's going to, there's, um, going to be a lot of new activity i don't know i guess it'll be centralized in each attraction kind of like an endless series of adventures if we wanted maybe not endless though you're right mary bear or maybe we just stay here and then she comes and this is w w what uh who's she oh well the world's kind of out of balance and uh I don't know, somehow this teaches her the le like, I guess when, so we be believe in her, Mary Bear, kind of like we believe in you, but a different, a little bit different. And she came and learned all these things of helping these beings that became attractions in the next, they, they went from wherever they were based, uh, maybe not even part of our world, but, uh, they moved into a new stage of existence where they were a theme park attraction. She didn't seem like she had a lot of uh, interaction with animatronics. And most of the history we had was more positive. Uh, maybe they needed to nurture her and she needed to nurture them or learn some lesson. Where this kind of seems like a little bit more like we could be dealing with some stuff that... Uh, is not into nurturing, but that we'll have to learn lessons from helping that those adjust to their stage of existence too. I've never seen a, a security bot before, but I've also never seen a security bot be shrug before, but that's clear you're shrugging, Mary Bear. Oh, because you're getting used to, yeah, you're getting used to going from being a bear to a um, security bot. I think we could probably get you back into your bear, 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 uh, oh, there'd be another Mary Bear. Okay. That's a uh, little bit out of my imagination zone. Well, I mean, it's been another time of play, play. I mean, this isn't how I thought it would turn out, you know, but we couldn't have done it without being together and working together as friends and then learning about being in the world of friends and then learning what it meant to be in the world of friends and then learning what it meant to kind of help. Uh, or even when the friends wouldn't do what we wanted in battle, uh, we didn't really have to do a whole. I mean, we did battle with the dragon a bit. And I think even if, to be honest, uh, Wada and everyone else, like if we, this could have been gone a lot differently, right? Uh, like someone could have sided with Vidul or sided with the dragon. Or they could have just gone right through everything. They didn't have to work with the friends. Uh, or they could have worked against the friends. Or maybe they could have antagonized the friends. So this could have been, a, this adventure could have gone a lot of different ways too. But I don't see how it could have ended any other way for us, right? This is what was supposed to happen, right? Like we we're on our path, uh, we we're doing our thing. And doing our best and uh, only good ideas, only bad ideas got us here and uh, got us here in the place we need to be to do the right thing. And um, I guess it's going to take some time and adjustment, right? Let's bring it all in and, and hold one another. We've done that before. Oh, yeah. The, actually, you, both you bots are warmer than you look. Uh, and we've got a world of friends. Uh with a, they've come to a, a tickle-based truce with the clock tower. We've got Vidul and the Baron of Boyle's son up there permanently in a hot air balloon that's not actually a real hot air balloon. So they're up there. I mean, that's kind of entertaining. Hi, Vidul. Hi, Baron of Boyle's son. And we have a chance to do what we can to do to, to, to keep helping. 
So we've entered uh, a new phase in our world. Of, uh, we've journeyed into the world of friends. And we found what you find when you journey into the world of friends. Not easy, but uh, the things are working out and all will be well. But we do have to kind of try and work together. So I'm so glad to have all of you as friends. It's really my honor to be here with all of you. Hold, you know, we're holding each other. And yeah, now we'll rest in this world of friends and we'll go from there tomorrow and we'll go on our next adventure together. Uh, or we'll be here to support each other as we go on. Uh, good night from uh, Zell and Mary Bear and Lord, Lord Von Chill, Granada, Eleanor, and Wada. Uh, good night, everybody. And of course, number five. Good night, everybody. Okay, this is Scoots running through uh, more of the people next, uh, starting with the number 300 or 310th patron. I'm just going to run through some people that uh, when we first uh, started uh, looking for value for value support for the show, this is the people that signed up, and uh, I want to thank them. And some of them patrons, and some are not. Uh, but yeah, we've kind of moved on. If you're listening to, to kind of do looking at it more like, oh, sleep with me is a service. Uh, so it's not really, it is for a lot of people about value for value. But it's more about how, how do we deliver this to you in the best way possible. So, and the, these, these are the people that knew it way before me. So I want to thank James and Martha and Andrew. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Paul, Lisa, and Jay, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Elise, Trevor, and Susan, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Uh, Dana, Huka, and Chris, Krista, thanks, thanks, and good night. Andrea, Jennifer, and Annie, thanks, 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 good night. Oh, Jennifer K, still a patron out of those. Uh, um, well, this is eye-opening because there's like former patrons and there's people who have been declined uh, for a long time. Uh, Hook is still a patron and Jennifer K. Uh, so thanks. Thanks. Uh, Annie, uh, Shauna, uh, Carrie, Carrie K. Uh, so I remember Tim S. Uh, Doug, Doug's still a patron. Thanks, Doug. Uh, uh, Car- Caroline C. Jessica H, uh, Cato, Samantha, Patricia, Daniel, Todd, uh, Todd F, still a patron. Uh, let's see who else we got here. We got Taylor, Heidi, Bono, different Bono though, uh, Corey, Claire, MW, still a patron. Thanks, MW. We got Pedro, Sue, Princess, uh, Tori, uh, Joshua, Michelle, still a patron. Michelle with no name, one L to uh, Amy, Lisa, B, B Funk. Uh, sometimes people change their names. Uh, uh, Elise R, still a patron. Gary J, still a patron. What's up? Uh, Jesse, Paul V. Um, Cameron W. A lot more. Uh, no wonder these like uh, the declines is really eye opening going through this too. I'm glad. Um, uh, so Cameron W. Still a patron. Sujata still a patron. Uh, Paul, uh, Z and K, Sam, Jennifer B, Francis, Caroline. Melissa, Ryan, Josh, Jenny. Meta, Dana, Carrie, Erica, St, Becky, Caitlin N, still a patron. Caitlin recognized too. Lights of people, like it's like I know who they are. So cool. Uh, Tamara, Kate, Stacy, Stacy, uh, Stacy G. I think one of the first people wrote about the podcast, maybe. Emily, Michael, Chris, Ruth, uh, Bannon, Thomas, T, TT, I remember TT, uh, Sally, Jessica, Mary, Jennifer F., uh, Christine, Larissa, Luke, Paige, Alicia, Dawn, Tom, uh, Amanda, 
Judy, 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 uh, who, who I know is a, a part of my family, another family member in there. Siobhan, Matthew, Leah, and Denny C., another friend of mine, uh, via the podcast. So, uh, yeah, thanks everybody. That's, uh, 400, 400 patrons right there. And you can see kind of, you can't see the list obviously, but, um, like a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of, there's like, uh, people that, uh, are like declined and they just did like the decline never got updated. And then there's, um, like, uh, people that are for, you know, the things changed and they became, uh, you know, they, like like they said, listen to the show or moved on or, you know, we're getting good sleep. So thanks to everybody who supports the show directly, uh, whether you subscribe to Sleep With Me Plus or you're a patron, you support our sponsors or you support the show for free uh, on our referral program, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. I uh, couldn't do it without all of you and, uh, and appreciate it. And here's Scoot's uh, Tuck You In sponsor uh, asking for some support. Thanks. Hey everybody, this is Scoots, and this is uh, the Sleep With Me week, two weeks in review. I guess I'll switch on and off. I'll do, do one week, I'll do it as a video, and then another week, I'll do it as an audio. So we got uh, over at Sleep With Me Plus, uh, ideally, you're getting moved over there. We're going to stop updating the content on Patreon by the end of March. I'd love to do it sooner. So if you're hearing this on Patreon, move over. It would be a little great to have you because you don't want to miss out, including, did you know there's just a podcast on Sleep With Me Plus with the ad-free episodes? That's full ad-free episodes of Sleep With Me. No, uh, you know, n- no ads and no thank yous at the end. And what do we have in there? We had uh, episode 1230 came out uh, Thursday. That was Bread Week, Great British Bake Off, episode three. January 10th, uh, Journey into the World of Friends, episode 12. We got one episode left uh, to, to see how it concludes with friendship. Uh, January 7th was Ikea Build. That's where I built a, built a dresser and a mirror. Holy mackerel. And I, didn't, I don't know, probably, I probably said that Biscuits Week uh, came out. That was Great British Bake Off, uh, season 10, collection 7, episode 2. Uh, and, uh, and uh, December 31st, uh, Jan- you know, whatever that is, that was New Year's Eve at 1226, Only Good Bad Ideas, Journey in the World of Friends, episode 11, uh, 27th was Ikea, the trip to Ikea with Tangents, 1225, uh, and 1224 was, uh, it came out December 20th on Sleep With Me Plus, but it was the first episode of the year. For regular listeners, well, it came out 20, oh, 11 days early. That makes sense. About two weeks early, huh? Cake Week, a Great British Bake Off, uh, season, seven, season 10, Collection 7. Well, what if you like story only episodes? Well, now on Sleep With Me Plus, the story only episodes come out the same day as the full episode. So if you only listen to story only episodes, you get that story only episode the same day as the full episode comes out. And if you don't, uh, uh, like if you don't like, uh, I don't know if you mix them up or, you know, you like to make playlists or, or something like that. Great for that too. So yeah, story only episodes kind of follow that same format. Bread week, uh, journey into the world of friends, 1229, new robot friends, uh, Ikea build biscuits week, only good, bad ideas, Ikea trip, uh, cake week. There is, according to my uh, podcast app, about 890 episodes in the Story Only feed. Uh, I think that's regardless of tier. Well over 1,230 episodes in the ad-free full episode feed. Let's uh, check the uh, all intro and all night feed next, Scoots. That's got 266 episodes in there. All intro came out last Thursday for uh, Boar Besties and Boar Friends. And it came out on Patreon for 10 to $20 patrons. Uh, that's uh, 10 16 to 10 20 uh, Then January 4th, Big Farm in the Sky PI, uh, part one. Four hours, Big Farm in the Sky PI, another all intro, an all night holiday episode, and on and on and on. So if you love intros or you love all night episodes uh, combined, there's, uh, you know, we're getting up there. We'll get to 300 soon. Now, bonus episodes, you know, there's an entire podcast feed, a podcast on Sleep With Me Plus, just with the bonus episodes. 
So if you love those posts, the episodes, you got access to them. If you prefer to skip them, you don't, you don't, you know, you can skip that feed. There's also a lot of cool stuff in there, including what do we got in there, Scoots? Well, you know, coming up this Thursday is uh, the first half of TNG, the T- Star Trek The Next Generation movie, Contact. That comes out for uh, Boar Friends and Boar Besties and on Patreon for 10 to $20 annual patrons. Uh, yeah, uh, we also had a post the episode come out. Thanks for asking. Uh, oh, how many? About, it depends on, like, uh, your tier. So I don't know what tier I'm looking at with this phone. But, yeah, we had a post the episode come out. Um, looks like an all-intro episode came out accidentally in the wrong feed, but it's probably my fault. Uh, uh, holiday lo- on location, binaural episodes, two of them. That's exciting. Uh, 1991 Disney Parade. So all the bonus stuff's in that feed. Also, uh, if you're on Discord, we're starting to, um, if you're a boar bestie, we're working on the episodes for holidays 2024 because you get to plan if you're a boar bestie. That's a new offering and Sleep With Me. Plus, you'll get to help be a part of uh, how the episodes are created. We're going to do four live streams over the year. And but there's been a lot on Discord I've been posting and uh, even got a recording going that you'll get su- super early on cut access to. So that'll be fun. So, yeah, thanks for supporting the show. Uh, if you're a patron, thanks for supporting the show for so long. But don't forget to follow the steps we've put out, including probably in the show notes of this episode. Get yourself moved over. It really only takes a few minutes. And if you're you if you're like uh you want to take longer, just watch the, all the videos we put out. There are links to those are right in the show notes, too. There's two episodes walking you through it step by step, holding the kind of hold one where I kind of virtually hold your hand. There's also ones about, hey, how to cancel your Patreon, how to set this up. So take your time. But if you're like me and you do like, uh, don't put it off because you don't want like it's just uh, like I've been putting in the posts. The reviews are r- r- rave reviews for Sleep With Me Plus. All right. Thanks, everybody, and uh, good night.